hide a home neighbor. So, a lot of my how-to project videos have been actually doing pretty well lately, so I thought I'd make another one that I haven't really seen ones online that I like too much, so I figure I'm gonna make it. A lot of people have asked me about the WeBoost antenna that I have up here, and how do I route it into the cab? Well, let me show you that, so I'm gonna go over today. Check this out. As you can see there, the Weeboos antenna goes through a solar panel pass-through in the top of the Jeep. It's clean, it's installed, it's waterproof, and it looks really nice. It's better than just drilling a hole and putting some uh, RTV around it, that's for sure. So, stay tuned and I will show you how to make this. So, here is a quick list of things that you'll need, all right? You definitely need a sealant adhesive. This one's an outdoor one, okay? That's always a plus, kinda need that, right? A drill with the hole. I recommend one with a step down bit. That helps quite a bit. Makes the hole a lot cleaner. Obviously, you're gonna need a tape measure. You're gonna need the pass-through itself and then the grommet that comes with it. Some painter's tape for marking some sandpaper to rough up the area, Sharpie or a pin to mark it, some sorted pliers, okay? And that's all you need. Now, if you wanna make it a little bit easier, a couple things that you can get extra, all right, is some sort of a plastic pry bar, something like that, so you have to pull like any panels away, or if you have the insulation in your, um, your hard top, you can use that. The other thing is one of these little window bat pump up bags here and you don't need it but it'll make life a lot easier and make for a finer installation if you do get one. This is just one, it's like a blood pressure cuff and you just pump it up. These are used for like putting in the wedges in between windows and raising them up and stuff like that but I'm going to use it to kind of keep pressure on the top of this and you'll see what I'm talking about later. The final one that's not a necessity but definitely makes things a little bit easier is a small shop vac just to keep everything nice and neat. So, and of course, well, I guess the last thing you would need would be a Jeep and technically a reason to run the wiring through there, but don't worry about it. I wanna show you how. Let's go do it. Now, mind you, this install can actually be done on pretty much any vehicle hard top as long as you seal it correctly and do it right. I just happen to own a Jeep, so that's what I'm doing it on. This way you can put solar panels, you can put antennas up there, and you have a nice, clean, waterproof pass-through through the hard top. So, first things first is I'm gonna do, take my little thingy here. Yeah, I said a little thingy. It's not a little thingy, by the way. Get up underneath here. These are just the insulation panels. They're just Velcroed on. And just kind of gently move those out of the way there. You got the next one down here. Sometimes they can be a little difficult to get into. Ah, there we go. Especially the first time you take it down. There we go. It can be a little tough. But these ones are just Velcroed on, hence, well, I just have the plastic piece. Now up here, we're gonna be drilling through, let's see, right about here, okay? Through my hard panel, and we'll measure it, and then we will drill it. So, but first we wanna go and kind of peel this Velcro tape back. And don't worry, we'll still put enough, enough of it back on so that uh, the, uh, the insulation still holds. Next step is to go ahead and measure out where you're going to cut your hole. So for me, it's going to be right in the center along the normal line here. I'm just going to kind of do my best to get the center here. It looks like it's about ooh, two and a half inches wide. So one, one and three quarters, it looks like. There we go. It doesn't need to be spot on. You can go ahead and make it spot on if you'd like. Next part is we're gonna go ahead and measure back how far back we want it. And for me, this is gonna be about two and a quarter. Just like your daddy always told you, measure, measure once, cut twice. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay, that looks pretty good. It looks pretty good and centered to me. The other thing is that the uh, 
the pass through that we place over it is going to cover up the hole. So if it's just a little, if it's a little bit off, it's going to be hidden and nobody's going to see it. So now we drill. One more smart step to do before you do this is also go ahead and put some tape on top to prevent blowout. Now I have a rhino rack on top, so it kind of gets in the way for me drilling in the top. If you did not have this or don't have one installed yet, you can drill through the top and it would actually probably be easier. For me, I gotta go underneath, through the bottom, through the top. So that's what we're gonna do. Next is easily the most nerve wracking part for any Jeep, truck, Toyota, or whatever build is drilling because drilling is permanent. So make sure you uh, cut twice, measure once, or whatever that saying is, okay? Because once there's a hole in there, you can't patch it up. It's not the end of the world, but it's never going to be factory again. So make sure you are good and ready. If you are, And this is where having the, the vacuum comes in a little handy. go it's drilled no going back now there is one more another little step that I just forgot that uh might make the install just a little bit cleaner it's just a rate take a, taking a razor blade and just kind of going right there just to kind of get off all the little fuzzies back inside the shop for just a little bit of preparation as you can see here it's pretty smooth isn't it so I'm gonna take that little piece of sandpaper that I had and just kind of rough up the the ends of here or the face of it so that way the adhesive and uh, the sealant has something strong you don't need to go crazy just enough to kind of take that sheen off and then it's important on these type right on these type of uh, passers here this little uh, groove right here that's actually gonna be where most of the sealant and adhesive goes so make sure to get down in there too doesn't take much just a good scratching. There you go. And as you can see, now it's good and scratched up. That's exactly what we want. We're also going to want to take a little bit of sandpaper right around the area on top where this is going to seal. When prepping the surface, one of the other things that I like to do is put down some tape to kind of, one, mark down exactly where this is going to go, or, well, pretty, pretty roughly exactly, I guess you can say, right there. All right. Not only that too, but it also when I put the uh, the goop down to help seal it, I can also peel off any excess that doesn't get on here, and I'm not scratching up anything extra that I don't need to. So, ooh, this is gonna hurt some people. Yep, I know. I'm gonna rough it up, rough, 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 rough it up, good. Now you probably don't need to do the whole thing. You just need to go on the outside, but yeah, it's just easier. And that's what I did on the other one. Once again, you don't need to go crazy. That's a good rough surface. Then you want to go ahead and clean it off. For me, I just like to take a simple alcohol pad and clean up the area of all the dust and grime. Scrub it really good. Dry it out. There we go. And now you also want to make sure to go ahead and do that to the bottom of the pastor. Make sure you clean up the underside of the pass-through here. Like I said, I'm just using an alcohol wipe. Now, do not make the same mistake I did. Last time I put this on, I didn't install um, the rubber grommet. And if you notice, when this goes in, it has to be tightened from the inside. Yeah, and I already glued it on. So I had to take the whole thing off, which wasn't that hard. Just had to use a scraper and peel it off. So make sure you actually go ahead and install this first. Make sure it's nice and tight. Kind of just hold my finger there. Take some pliers. And you don't need to go herky-durky with this thing. Just, just enough to make sure it's snug. There. Make sure it's not coming out. And then don't forget the uh, little clamp ring that goes down on here. 
Now this isn't needed for the install, but once this is on, the other thing you'll notice there is that there is still a hole there. So if you don't have anything to put through here, put like a small piece of wire or something like that 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 can clamp on and seal it up tight so that way it's ready to go when you do need to run something up to the roof. Now we're gonna want to go ahead and put the goopy goop on. I am using, what's this called? The White Lightning All Weather Construction Sealant and Adhesive. It's uh, instantly bonds and seals even wet and oily surfaces. Storm Blaster. Sounds like a bad Avenger name. Anyways, you don't have to use this exact same one, but it's uh, what my favorite Storm Nards had. So that's what I went and got, and I know for a fact that it works. And this stuff is really thick, so you gotta really squeeze to get it on here Place it in here ever so gently. Make sure it's lined up the best we can. Press it down. I kind of move it around just a little bit, just kind of let that adhesive kind of get all over or where it needs to be. Kind of sight down the vehicle, make sure it's straight, make sure it's on all the way, nice and flat. There we go. Now, you can see how the tape came in to actually align that and then also when I pull it off there's not gonna be any extra goo now where this inflatable bag comes in is right here check this out so I slip this right there okay and then I start pumping it up make sure it's straight so it's not gonna push it to the side There we go. Now what that does is you can see, it keeps pr downward pressure on it. And just like with any glue job, clamping is the secret to a good adhesion. Yes, I don't care what anybody says. Oh, it's just as strong if you don't clamp it. No, it's not. It, if you clamp it, it's gonna be much, much stronger. Make sure there's no bubbles, leaks, or anything like that, and it seals it up. And that's it. The whole project took about, about 35, 45 minutes. That's about it. Now you can take your time on it, go a little bit longer if you want to. But by this time tomorrow, I give that about 24 hours to fully cure it, minimum 12 before I take the, uh, the little pump off. So by this time tomorrow, you will have a nice, sweet, clean pass through that you can use. So I wanna thank you guys for following along on this uh, build here. If you like what I'm showing you, don't forget to hit that like, comment, share, and subscribe. Have fun, I hope this works for you, give you a few ideas, and I'll see you in the next build video. Deuces.